The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'm sharing with you 10 games remembered on the 3DO. Back in the 90s, I used to flip through game magazines and drool over the pictures of games offered on the 3DO. It was too expensive back in the day, but eventually I picked one up at a yard sale in my game collection, and today I'm sharing that console and games with you. In today's video, I'm actually capturing footage using an actual 3DO, the same 3DO that's been in my collection over 20 years. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy this video. This is the first model of the 3DO console, the FZ1. This is a picture of the console in my collection. I've had it in my collection for well over 20 years. It came out in October of 1993 with a suggested retail price of $699. Gosh, that's expensive. It's very durable. I haven't had any issues with it. And I consider it a pioneer of modern day gaming. Here is the very first pack and game, Crash and Burn. There's two versions of this game in the States. There's a long box version, which is very difficult to find. And the pack and jewel case version, which is easier to find. It's not a perfect game, but it definitely is a game that debuted on the 3DO, a console exclusive, and was a pretty fun game to play. In the beginning of this game, you choose one of six racers, all with laughably bad dialogue, which is funny now to go back and play. The game consists of 30 different tracks and 28 weapons. So you have some simple weapons to begin with, and as you win and gain money, you can go and purchase weapon upgrades. I consider this game a combination of Wipeout and Twisted Metal. You know, it definitely, you know, was a pioneer back in the day. You know, my mind was blown when I went to a rental store playing in this for the very first time. I was just like, gosh, you know, I never thought of graphics in the same way after playing this. Another early success for the 3DO was Shockwave. There was an expansion made for this, which required a memory file in the 3DO console to play it, Operation Jumpgate. It's an arcade 3D shooter that has you taking out aliens on Earth in the future of 2019. I always had a soft spot for arcade science fiction simulators, and this was right up my alley. Lots of terrible full motion video here, but at the time it was revolutionary. The original release was called Shockwave, but on other consoles it was known as Shockwave Assault. And the original Shockwave had 10 missions with the expansion Operation Jump Cape offering five additional missions. Another great addition to the 3DO library was Road and Track Presents The Need for Speed. And this is a great racing simulator that started the Mega franchise. While dated by today's standards, this at the time was exceptional, offering eight different exotic cars, everything from a Lamborghini to a Toyota Supra. It was fun to race in various stages using different camera perspectives, as well as watching your wrecks in instant replay. That was a lot of fun to look back and watch your best run on a particular level. Definitely, if you wanna see how far Need for Speed has come over the years, check this one out. Here is another game that was offered in both pack-in form and retail is Gex, a great platformer that's often overlooked by other more popular characters. Gex was a big seller on the 3DO and you know, there wasn't that many platformers on the 3DO, so it was a really nice addition. This is a great platformer if you like these types of games. There was great gameplay, awesome graphics, and varied levels and stages. I really enjoyed playing this one and encourage you to check it out. John Madden Football on the 3DO blew everything else out of the water back in the day, featuring digitized full motion video clips, as well as hundreds of offensive and defensive plays using your favorite NFL team. I think it's really fun to go back and play classic sports titles. You know, this, when it came out, was revolutionary. It totally destroyed the Super Nintendo and Genesis versions. I remember back in the day, loving to play the Eagles, especially against the Cowboys. Randall Cunningham here. 
and throw the long bomb. Touchdown. It's pretty sweet. And then you have full motion video clips. It was just, at the time, just breathtaking. Outside of the Neo Geo, Samurai Showdown on the 3DO was one of the better arcade ports. One thing that this version features that's better than most is the CD quality sound. Samurai Showdown is one of my favorite franchises of fighting games and the 3DO had a decent port, far from perfect, had some load times, but the, the music and the quality of the sound is really an advantage of the 3DO. Unfortunately, due to the console's price, not as many people appreciated this excellent fighting game port. I wish more Neo Geo games got ported to the 3DO. If I was going to pick my favorite game on the 3DO today, it would be Star Control 2. Star Control 2, I have so many fond memories of playing this Super Melee with a friend at a video rental store in Redding, California. Star Control 2 has two parts. It has a melee where you can play with a buddy or the computer or the space exploratory game, which is huge. There are over 500 stars and 3,800 planets to explore. You go to a planet, you then can go to the surface and you can collect minerals and elements, which then you can upgrade your ships. But the Super Melee is what I played a lot with friends. This was fun. We had tournaments on it, trying to duke it out with each other using different ships with various abilities. They had funny names. Definitely, this is the game to check out on the 3DO. The 3DO took many franchises from other consoles and just made them better. And Road Rash is a great example of that. You know, incorporated the awesome CD sound, which was the advantage of the 3DO. And so this game, Road Rash, came packed in with an extra music sampler. And this is the CD that got me interested into the band Soundgarden. Road Rash is pure adrenaline fun, you know, taking a simple racing game and then adding the uh, violence of punching and kicking your enemies. I thought that was great. You can also upgrade bikes and stuff. It really has a great sense of speed. The control is simple. This is another game that I experienced quite a bit at a rental store that was offering hourly play of a 3DO. I think it was like $3 an hour and I had a lot of fun playing this one over and over again. Definitely a great version of Road Rash on the 3DO. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo was an excellent port on the 3DO. Unfortunately, the 3DO came bundled with a three button controller. Even a six button controller honestly didn't make it perfect, but here we go. This is an amazing introduction especially with the cd sound that's a big advantage that the 3do had over its console counterparts of the time again going back to the mid 90s especially before the playstation came out uh, this version had excellent sound and so if you can get past the control frustration of the three button definitely play this with the six button controller option if you can this is a good port i think the 3do struggled to capture a specific audience, and I think it was trying really hard to see what was popular. And Street Fighter II in the mid-90s was super popular, so this was a good option. And definitely for fans of Street Fighter, check it out. Kind of a late release on the 3DO was Captain Quasar, and this was advertised as a, an outlandish character, you know, and it was very cartoony graphics. I don't know, uh, you know, if it was the best fit for the 3DO. It, it definitely had kind of a 16-bit vibe. It had awesome animations. There was two-player simultaneous options. You go around blowing stuff up, kind of mission-based. Uh, you know, I had a lot of fun playing this. This is definitely something that people probably don't consider when they think of the 3DO. But to me, I played it and had a lot of fun. It just shows the example of the diversity of games offered on the 3DO, definitely don't overlook Captain Quasar. There are other countless games that I could have shown today. What are your favorites on the 3DO? I'd love to hear from you. Please comment below in the comment section. And as always, thank you for the ongoing positive support. 
it means the world to me. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing to my channel as I have and cover many things of retro gaming and beyond. Thank you for the wonderful support. This is the Immortal John Hancock. You take care.